Happy Monday. It's almost over. It's 1020 Pacific Standard Time. And I'm going to start the Gathering of Eagles podcast. Happy Monday. Okay. We've got a little bit of a time delay and sorry about that. Um, it's been a good day here in beautiful Point Roberts. We're enjoying a fabulous summer because we don't have any normally we have like 5,000 tourists and people that own homes here and it's about a five square mile area and so there in the summertime there's a resort activity and it's really busy but this year because the Canadian border is closed we have it all to ourselves which is pretty amazing and so we're enjoying that quite a bit and Tim and I are working and we've been able to um, have our stand I don't know if you've seen that but we have been taking the stand since May 31st with Rodney Howard Brown out in Florida and other believers and we've been doing that here in Point Roberts at a park called Monument Park and uh, that is right on the Canadian border. So if you go to faithtrainers.com forward slash stand, you can actually uh, take a look at the map of it. It's a boundary marker number one. So it's the top most northwest corner of the continental United States. And we live right there. And it's a little park and it's got a big obelisk. And then we set up and we have uh, friends from Canada and we have friends from the U.S. that come and we have a a time of fellowship with Bible reading and prayer and this last Sunday yesterday we had uh, we had about uh, five people come some from Canada some from here and uh, we had just a great great time and we even had another uh, healing miracle which is always one of our favorite things we had uh, one of the ladies had been to uh the lake and they had been moving their boat in i think and this was three years ago and she jammed her arm and it it injured her elbow and it injured her shoulder and she just hadn't gotten in to have i guess she's had to have surgery or something and had 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 not like debilitating pain but definitely something wrong there with how she could move her arm and aching and things like that and we do what we do and since like it was uh, a good time to pray and laid hands on her elbow and it was it was one of those fun ones where um, where sometimes I'm just gonna tell you everything because this that's what the gathering of eagles is for so uh, we're, we discuss it at our stand meeting and our other meetings how does how does God do things and if you look at the gospels Jesus when he was praying for people to be healed he did a lot of different things um, everything from speaking to things to uh, spitting on the ground spitting on people's eyes touching them uh, telling them to do things there was there was a wide variety of ways that he did things and it's the same now um just god likes to have us do do things a different way and not get into routines because that helps us to remember that we are not the healer he is the healer he is our provider he is the best and so he'll have us do that so um this lady uh we had been talking about another uh healing miracle of this lady that had fallen down and and had an injury and then she had gotten healed of she'd had arthritis for 30 years and her hands were 
it was her hands and her back and some other places and it burnt out out of her like instantly and that was three years ago and uh, that was a lady that both uh, um, her family knew and we knew and and they knew that that had happened and so she was um, thinking you know God can can do that for one person he'll be happy to do it for somebody else if we ask so but this you know this was an injury injury is different than arthritis but God uh, made us and if he made us then he knows how to fix us which is pretty awesome and but there's different ways that we do things so this time uh, I had put my hand on her um, on her elbow and on her upper arm and right away when we started started to pray I felt felt the uh, anointing power go into her and I wasn't moving my hand and this happens um, sometimes when I'm praying for people uh, sometimes they think that I'm moving my hand around or doing things and I'm not and uh, with her there was we could feel we both she could feel it and I could feel it we could feel the bone in her elbow and then like ligaments inside of her elbow moving around underneath my hand and popping back into position and then uh, the when we do pray we pray until we sense like the power has quit flowing in there and doing whatever it's doing and so took my hand off her elbow and she started bending it and raising it and all that and it perfectly healed instantly healed now sometimes um, like her husband her husband had gotten prayer a few months ago for uh, some sciatica in his back now with him we prayed and it took a, a few days before he noticed a substantial difference and then about a, about a week week and a half until it was gone and so sometimes and this is one of the things that we know with Jesus sometimes he prayed for people and they were had an instant healing and then other times it says while they were going they got healed so sometimes it happens right away sometimes it happens as people go on their way but we just don't give up we let God God work and if we need to pray again we pray again and we keep working with people until they receive the most that they can and it's it's pretty cool so anyway she was happy we're happy that's always a fun time so that was one of the things and we talked about um, what's going on in China because we're very concerned about our, our brothers and sisters in China and Hong Kong Taiwan and India many many nations are having a tough time and in, in fact with this shutdown we've got we're looking at an extra 245 maybe um, million people dying of starvation because of the shutdown and uh, that's very very disturbing to us and so that's one of the one of the things that we're wanting we're wanting the shutdown to stop we're wanting things to change because it's uh, it's dangerous and it's life-threatening for people so so we don't uh, we don't like that at all and we're praying for for a peaceful resolution in those countries and for freedom we want free China with no more CCP and we want free Hong Kong and free Taiwan and one Korea and freedom of religion freedom of speech freedom of everything because Jesus is coming soon and we want to be able to tell as many people in the world as we can about him but it's hard to do when things are shut down by evil wicked people which we don't like so we don't like that and so one of the things that I wanted to do uh, tonight and then uh, other nights is talk about a little bit of what's going on in the news um, I'm gonna get into more detail on it on other nights because this is an introduction it's going to be kind of more generic um, one of the things that we're seeing right now uh, is uh, revealing like after the Jeffrey Epstein arrest and then what happened with him and then the just Lane Maxwell arrest there's been more talk of what's been going on um, and it, it does involve children children being kidnapped children being um, 
used for as, as sex slaves. Uh, there's organ harvesting. There's all kinds of terrible things. And one of the things that I want to be uh, doing with the podcast is uh, talking about things in the news, but talking about things in the Bible and helping people manage uh, their their soul because that's one of the things you're, when I'm when I'm talking about the soul I'm not talking about the heart our heart and when we have Christ in our heart our that's our our human spirit and that's renewed our heart is is different than our soul our soul is our our mind that's where our personality is and you can think of it as a mind the will and the emotions and those are things that are are distinctly uh, human and they are not changed when you receive Jesus they are something you have to work on just like you have to work on your body your body you know you start out hopefully as a baby with a healthy strong body but as you grow and as you experience things or don't experience things and depending on what you eat and don't eat and where you live and what you eat what you have uh, in your atmosphere what you have genetically going on you're gonna have different situations with your body than somebody else does and so uh, the same thing with your soul your soul is going to be different depending on how you live and who talks to you and what you watch and what you read and what experience that you that you have and if you are someone like I grew up with a mother that had been you know had some problems and had a lot of fear and so she was very fearful a lot and then as I grew up I I really didn't like feeling that way didn't like living that way didn't like the restrictions and so I made it a point to study the Bible and pray and learn you know how to to get fear out of my mind and get get to where I wasn't a worry worrying person I wasn't a fearful person I was a person of faith but that is uh, something that I had you know distinct and clear things that I did and you know some of that are things that I did do I did study what the Bible teaches I did study um, what is actually going on like when I when this whole um, Chinese virus came in I I feel like information is our our weapon and we live in the earth and we do need to know about some things and so I um, you know made it a point to look at what's going on with that and keep looking at what's going on with that as far as you know where did it come from what is it what helps people what doesn't help people I, I absolutely believe in the healing power of God but I also believe in doctors and medicine and, and any way that we can stop people from suffering and dying. I am all in on that. And uh, when we've got something that's attacking and potentially going to hurt that many people, I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to learn about it. So, so that um, because I have gone and looked at that so closely and looked at a lot of different things and, and not in the mainstream news, I don't have a lot of fear about that because I've seen you know that there are treatments I've seen what the true statistics are as far as how many people have gotten it and how many people are likely to get it and I've also seen how it's changed because it's a virus and just like a, you know the reason they have a different flu shot every year is they've got a different strain of flu that or maybe four or five p potential different strains of flu that are going to be going around theoretically and so they want to do something that's going to attack that virus that's unique or more unique to each year. So we know, everybody knows that viruses change. Uh, viruses come, viruses go, um, and one may may spread more than, than another one. And, and this was some, one that was new and we didn't know how it spread. We didn't know who it, it hurt the worst. We didn't know anything. But now that it's been around and it's been studied and, and we've learned how to manage it, good news is a lot more um, people are getting better and fewer people are dying and the uh, severity of it is not as good. Now, I believe that 
that that is some of that's a natural thing that that happens with viruses they mutate to be weaker but that is one thing specifically that uh, my prayer team and other people of prayer right away when this started coming around um, and was predicted to be real bad we prayed for that to mutate as quickly as possible and get weaker and weaker and and disappear and that is what happened it has substantially gotten weaker and that's good so knowing more information reduces fear and then the other thing that is going to keep you out of fear is you know what are you putting in front of your eyes what are you listening to and uh, where, where people are having a real problem right now is they have watched a lot of horror movies they have watched a lot of uh, things in the news that are scary and so they have got uh, and actually um, if you think of, of the soul as like a, something with train tracks in it you may have um, a train track that's not used very often and that might get um, a little bit rough and it's you run the train down it and it's it's uh, slow and going because it's got not much use and it's not very developed it's small and that's uh, that's how some things that we think about is but other things that we think about a lot or if we put a lot of emotional uh, involvement into them those are going to be bigger stronger train track tracks that are going to be faster and and that's where a lot of people they've, they've developed um, fear responses about things and so as soon as something comes that's even similar that fear train gets right on that fast track and and captivates their minds and so you know one of the things that I want to be talking about on this podcast is some ways that you can retrain your responses to where you don't just have fear overtake you and put you into a state and keep you in a state fear comes to everybody but the Bible says every time it says fear not three I guess it's 365 times it says fear not so it, that is not something that we do but it, when you say fear not it doesn't mean that fear doesn't come to you we have a a thing called an amygdala in our brain that's an organ that uh, secretes hormones and it's the fight-or-flight response that comes from that and adrenaline and some other hormones come there so if you get scared by like a shock or you see a bear or you know somebody's attacking you that fear will release adrenaline into your system and that adrenaline will help you run faster it'll help you be stronger it'll help you be more alert and aware and so that is a good thing if you do have a bear chasing you it is a bad thing if it's something imaginary or it's something that you're having that response and uh, somebody is telling you things over and over and you flip into that because adrenaline in your body over and over hour after hour is not a healthy state for your body to be in it's it's actually destructive and so we want we want our body to be nurtured and healed and so we want to have good management on that adrenaline so that's one of the things that I want to talk about so we'll be talking on the podcast about very various information and things like that about the news if we do feel like we need to do that and we're also going to talk about the Bible and tonight I want to, to read from John 14 and and this is going to be you know one of our themes because I've got I've got some you know information on on what's going to be happening and what I, we expect to be seeing in the news and it's not going to be good it's going to be very disturbing and especially you know things that have happened with children and we are going to have people that are literally going to lose their mind and just not be able to handle it or um, and I, I've had some experiences in my life uh, where I've seen some things that were uh, really horrific and 
you know, I, I've had a season where I had, you know, every time I'd close my eyes, I'd see that, that bad thing. And for like a year and a half, and I didn't know how to deal with it. I was young and I didn't understand ways to deal with it. And then I, later I learned that there are things that you can do that you can get uh, freedom in your mind from that. So we're going to be talking about different different ways that you could do that and soul management like what I talked about managing your mind your will and your emotions so that even if there are perilous times here you're not going to be feeling like you're in peril you're going to know that God loves you and that everything's going to be okay so tonight I'm going to read from John 14 And this is Amplified Classic. We always use the Amplified Classic because the new one, they have taken some important things out of it. And that really, uh, you know, uh, uh, bothers me. So, so far, this is, this is a good one. And the reason that I'm choosing this is, is in the timeline of what happened with Jesus. This is his last really serious session with his disciples before he was crucified and died. And they, he had told them that he was going to do that, and they didn't really understand it. And they had seen people be crucified before, and they knew, you know, that it was a possibility. But they, they still pretty much thought that he was going to be um, taking over politically and not that it, he would actually die and be killed. Because they had, they'd seen him where people were mobbing him and chasing after him, and he'd just, you know, walk away, and they couldn't find him, or they, he'd just disappear in, in the book of John, we call it uh, Ninja, Ninja Jesus John, because he always talks about things where, where it says Jesus was there and then he wasn't there, or he was there and then they didn't recognize him, and he's he's got uh, some fun perspectives on that. But anyway, if you think about what Jesus knew was going to happen, was he knew um, that they were going to see the, one of the most horrible things a person has ever seen. They were going to see him beaten to an unrecognizable state they were going to see him uh, nailed onto a cross and tortured and they were going to see him struggling to breathe for possibly hours um they knew that it, you know he knew that it was going to be a shorter because of the, the religious rules and the passover and that, that they they would cut it off but you know there was no timeline it's how long his body lasted and it lasted about three hours and and uh, sometimes people would, were crucified and they would they would be alive for like a day, but usually not uh, not more than that because they they just they just suffocate and they they can't breathe. It's really really painful, really bad. But so he knew that was coming. He knew not only uh, is he going to be separated from them, but they are going to see him tortured and suffering and dying, and there's not anything they can do about it at all. And and that's one of the things that we're going to be all dealing with here is seeing things that uh, we can't do anything about to change immediately and we can't do anything to fix things that have happened already and so you know Jesus was helping them and, and preparing them for what he knew um, was going to be bad because he also also knows that uh, he's going to be restored to his position in heaven and everything's going to be great from that standpoint and that he wouldn't be staying dead and he wouldn't be staying in pain everything was fixed everything was put back and and that's one of the wonderful things with with Jesus is even when bad things happen there's a lot of things that if we will will work with uh, with faith he puts back here on the earth and then there's other things that once we get with heaven it's all good. So we're not, uh, we're not going to be fearful, but one of the reasons we're not fearful is, is this scripture right here. And so I'm starting with John 14 and 14, 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, and agitated. You believe and adhere to and trust in and rely on God. Believe in and adhere to, trust in, and rely also on me. In my father's house there are many dwelling places, homes. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I am going away to prepare a place for you. And when, if I go and make ready a place for you, 
I will come back again, and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And to the place where I am going, you know the way. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by and through me. If you had known me, had learned to recognize me, you would also have known my Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, cause us to see the Father, that's all we ask. Then we shall be satisfied. And Jesus replied, Have I been with all of you for so long a time, and you do not recognize and know me yet, Philip? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say then, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? What I am telling you, I do not say on my own authority and of my own account, but the Father who lives continually in me does the works, his own miracles and deeds of power. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the very works themselves. If you cannot trust me, at least let these works that I do in my Father's name convince you. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will be himself able to do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than these, because I go to the Father. And I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name, as presenting all that I am, so that the Father may be glorified and extolled in and through the Son. Yes, I will grant, I myself will do for you whatever you shall ask in my name, as presenting all that I am. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive or welcome or takes to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. I will come back to you. Just a little while now, and the world will not see me any more. But you will see me, because I live, you will live also. At that time, when that day comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. That's verse 20. Isn't he a lovely Jesus? We can trust him, that no matter what happens, he's got us. So I'm going to tell you uh, where you can find out more. We're uh, going to do this podcast. And I think it's going to be a daily podcast for a while here. And it'll be here on YouTube or Facebook live. And then we'll also be having it on iTunes and other podcast channels. Uh, it'll probably, uh, since we're going to do it at night, they'll probably go up in the morning. And uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram on at Faith Trainers and on Facebook and Twitter uh, Catherine B. Trainer and then uh, the Gathering of Eagles it'll be Gathering of Eag 1 E-A-G and then the, the number 1 and then we also have a Gathering of Eagles Facebook group and the Facebook group uh, we're going to be using uh, for our projects, one of our projects with Faith Trainers is we are translating uh, some of Keith Moore's material and some other great Christian materials to many languages, and we're going to be using crowdsourcing to do that. And so uh, we'll have teams affiliated with the Gathering of Eagles that are going to be doing that, and it's pretty exciting. Uh, that's not all implemented yet, but we've got a good a good run on it, and systems are getting set up for doing it, and it'll be great. So um, I wanted to 
tell you that and then invite you to come back tomorrow and if you go on our our Twitter we we will put the time on it but it's probably going to be later in the evening like this and of course most people when it's a podcast they are going to uh, look at it when they're ready to look at it but if you do want to hop on live We do have a live chat on Facebook that's working, and then our YouTube chat does not seem to be working. And so hopefully we'll get that going, but our our streaming software uh, isn't showing the YouTube chat, and it's it's probably something I didn't set up right. So that's where that's at, and I'm going to pray, and then we're going to close, but I'll I'll say a nice good night prayer for you, or good morning, or whenever it'll end up being that you hear this. So, Father, I pray for my friends, and I ask you to minister to them and bless them, give them peace, and I ask you, Holy Spirit, to come as that comforter and as the counselor and show them what they need to know and give them peace rest, a rest for their soul, a rest for their body, and bring them into a new day with a new beginning, and remind us that Jesus loves us, and we'll all be together with him in heaven real soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. Good night.